Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I'm still talking about how to build a cardboard boat that will beat the pants off anybody else. In this segment, we're going to start to talk a little bit about the whole speed and drag section of the boat design. I mentioned in my previous video that we're pretty well stuck with a displacement hull, which means we're always going to be sitting in the water displacing the same amount no matter how fast we go because we can't go fast enough to create dynamic pressure to lift us out of the water. If you missed that, go back and watch it. Um, so in the cardboard boats that you mostly see in competition, if you look at it from the side, they're pretty much these two styles. You've got a box that somebody made float, or you've got a box that somebody decided to put a ramp on the front to help decrease drag. Well, this certainly is better than this. And I'll get to talk about that in just a second. If you look at these boats from the top, you basically have your box, or somebody might get even a little bit more creative and slope the sides in. Um, what you see some people do, I've seen it once or twice, is they'll combine this with this and have a really nice pointed front. Well, that's really, really great. This design certainly beats this right here, but there's an even better way to do it. First off, let's talk about the problems with these. This contributes to not only a lot of wetted area, but in the area of cardboard boat design, wetted area is really not that important. It's the form drag that's more important, or pressure drag. Form drag is drag that uh, is a result of pressure differences between the front and the back as you're moving. So, if we have, let's say we're going to go, this is the water, and we're, the boat's actually moving this way. Well, the way of making resistance is what the problem is. As this thing starts to move, it's going to have to try to move a bunch of water out of its way. And I'll show you on this, on this side here. If the water line is here, and you're just placing all the water underneath here. As this thing starts to move, we'll move it towards me, as it starts to move, it's going to have, this water that's in front of it has got to go somewhere. Well, the only options for a boat are it can go under the boat or it can go around the boat. Let's hope to God it doesn't go over the boat. So you're left with under the boat or around the boat. Well, the ramp profile that I just erased a second ago, like that, the water is indeed attempting to go under the boat. Well, the problem with that is it takes an awful lot of power to try to get your boat up over the water. Let's, we're going to go ahead and assume that the water is going to go around. If we go around the boat, you've got a similar problem. You've got to push all this water out of the way, go around, and then it's got to come back together here at the end of your boat. That takes an enormous amount of power as well. You see this kind of, this is exactly what happens when the semi trucks going down the highway. You've got this giant square box that tries to has to push all this out of the way and then it gets and so you create a bubble. There's a lot of positive pressure here, positive dynamic pressure from your thrust trying to go forward to move the water out of the way. But then the form drag is also there's a bubble of negative pressure right there. And so when you add this negative and this positive, you get a huge pressure differential that's resisting the uh, forward motion of your boat, or your car, or whatever vehicle you're in. We know that we're going to have to push the water pretty much around the boat. It's too hard to climb up over the top because we don't have the power. So gosh, what can we do about it? Well, there are several things we can do. Let's streamline our boat. And the easiest way to do it, and I've seen this before, um, you know, make, it, make something of a diamond shape. Obviously mine's a little skewed, we're going to head on a We'll take a 355 heading there. But obviously this is going to be much better than the previous. Now, one thing you have to bear in mind here is that somebody has to fit in these shapes. So that's what I mentioned before is it's, it's an iterative solution. You can't just settle on one thing and then compute everything else. You have to do it all in parallel. So that's where Excel really helps out. And I'm, like I said, it's going to be a lengthy series, so bear with me here. So we're going to streamline our boat. And we're going to choose uh, a shape that, you know, is more diamond shape. You can even, you know, you can make curves from cardboard. It's, it is possible, so don't worry about that. And if you want to go with curves, I'm going to show you how here in a little bit. Uh, we're going to go with the wave piercing style. We can't climb over it. We don't really want to have to push too much around it, so we're going to pierce the waves. There are boats out there that do this. And in fact, um, the racing shells that you see, you know, that the fours and eights row down the rivers, that's what they use. They're trying to pierce the wave because it's too hard to climb up over it. We want a fine entry and a fine exit. 
What that means is, if we go back to our old hole shape, that's the square box. This is a 90 degree entry. Water's coming in, it's making right and left turns, and going out like that. You want this angle to be as small as possible. So the whole goal here is to minimize this angle here, and of course, this angle back here. We're going to have to call that fee. These don't have to be the same. Uh, it just so happens in the boats I've always made, they are, and I'll tell you why later. Now we're going to talk about a few other things, but I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.